Well, the gospel of greed is very much on display yet again in the sleepy little town of Davos in Switzerland at the annual January meeting of the World Economic Forum. You know, the forum made up of the corporate elite and politicians and opportunists and philanthropists and narcissists, all of them getting together annually to, uh, to engage in that uh, incestuous orgy of self-promotion and uh, rhetorical drivel. Of course, the meeting this year won't be quite as spectacular as previous years because a number of people are missing. There is no American delegation, no Donald Trump. He vetoed it. So Davos had to settle for a video message from Pompeo, the Secretary of State. He was so robotic and static. I've rarely seen anything like it. And he's so dumb. But of course, he's in a dumbbell cabinet. And then there's Theresa May, she can't be there because of Brexit, and Macron can't be there because he'd have to run a phalanx of yellow jackets, and at the level of China and Russia and India you have only deputies, so the uh, jamboree, the pageantry at Davos is less vigorous than it has been in previous years. You know, Davos really likes to spend its time talking about the disintegration of the world, a disintegration which has carefully been or orchestrated by the people at Davos themselves. And this year they've chosen inequality. Previous years they've chosen trade and the economy and, and climate change. This year inequality, and it was a perfect choice because it juxtaposes so directly with the report which was launched by Oxfam as Davos began. And Oxfam points out in its report on poverty and inequality that 26 people in the world have as much wealth as the bottom half of the world's population. That is, 26 people have as much wealth as 3.8 billion people. And in the last 10 years, the number of billionaires has doubled. And in the last year, they are receiving on a daily basis two and a half billion additional dollars, whereas the bottom half of humankind lives on something less than $5.50 a day. And if you want another somewhat vivid juxtaposition, you have Jeff Bezos, the head and founder of Amazon, uh, whose wealth is $112 billion, according to Forbes magazine, and uh, Oxfam points out that 1% of Bezos's income could serve to pro provide health care for all of Ethiopia, that is 105 million people. Indeed, even one half of 1% additional income by way of taxes on the wealthy and the corporations could yield enough money to put 262 million children into school in developing countries and save the lives of 3.3 million children. Now, the suggestion of increased taxes was made from the floor of Davos during a panel discussion and the audience actually laughed, and the suggestion was contemptuously dismissed. Davos has become an irrelevant travesty. They see themselves as the court of Louis XIV, except they are a court where no heads will roll. They save the guillotine for everyone else. That was last week. I'm Stephen Lewis.